Welcome back to our 63rd episode of the Launcher Farm Show, where I interview Michelle Berman Michael from Berman Media and the creator of the Instagram Power Method. In today's episode, Michelle and I talk about why it's extremely important to understand the human psychology and how you can use that in your marketing to have a major impact on your audience. And Michelle shares how important it is to narrow your focus on Instagram and not try to be everything to everyone. And we talk about what you can do to use your personal interests and passions to build a much stronger following that will help you close more deals and have fun while doing it. Michelle shares a super easy way to plan your posts so that you maximize your time and get more from your content. And we talk about how you can use other social media channels to help build credibility across all platforms to ensure you build more trust and actually see results. Plus, we talk about a ton of other ideas that you can use to grow your geographic farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Michelle. Welcome back to another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, and today we've got a great guest. It's Michelle Berman-Michael from the Instagram Power, creator of the Instagram Power Method and from Berman Media. So Michelle, take a second, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Yeah, so I'm really excited, Ryan. Um, we met in a, a really new networking group, which was very cool. Um, and I think we just hit it off almost instantly based off of how we do business and how we want agents to do business. So it's been a really fun new relationship for both of us. Um, but as you said, my name is Michelle Berman Michael. I am the creator of the Instagram Power Method. And it is a course that I designed in July of 2019 after a very long and treacherous six months of building um, and released it out to all realtors and loan officers across the country as a tool to essentially help them ditch a lot of the expensive marketing that they were forced into, if you will. Yep. Um, but the course is, is something that I'm really passionate about, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about more, but I am a new mom. So I just had a baby uh, nine weeks ago, which is amazing. Uh, my husband and I just moved halfway across the country <laughs> to a very small town in the middle of Louisiana, um, which has been a journey coming from Phoenix, Arizona. So that's a little new and fresh, um, definitely unique. I will say that. <laughs> um, but aside from that, um, you know, I'm, I'm living really happily here and so far so good. Um, I certainly enjoy the green outside. It's new, um, Phoenix. We just have a lot of cactus, <laughs> that are green, but that's pretty much, yeah, yeah. um, so I'm excited to be here and excited to pour into your audience and hopefully they can learn a lot. Awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited to share your experience and knowledge because I think Instagram is something we're going we're to talk about today. It can be used very well and it can be used not very well. Myself, I'm not the greatest at it. And a lot of agents aren't that great at it. And that's kind of where you found your niche is helping real estate agents and loan officers kind of master Instagram for their business. Because I find that, you know, I'm sure you see it, that a lot of agents don't really know what to do or how to use it. They, they look at celebrities using Instagram and don't really know how to parlay that into their business. So that's obviously what you designed to do. So before we jump into that, I want to kind of get a bit of your, your backstory and how did you get into it and, and why Instagram and why real estate? Yeah. So this is my favorite, absolute favorite story to tell. Um, and something that I'm, I'm super excited about being a big part of the book that I'd like to write, um, in the next year. Um, it's a big why for me, um, or I shouldn't say why big 2022 goal for yep. myself, um, is to get that to roll out. But um, the story of how Michelle became Michelle, we'll go, we'll start from there. Um, so I actually come from a, a very high, highly, um, how do you say corporate family? We're going to just say it that way. Um, meaning everybody in my family is either lawyers, bankers in the financial industry. My sister was a high school biology teacher um, and my mom got a full ride to vet school when she was getting ready to go to school, ended up becoming a paralegal. Um, and so for me going into college, I just felt like I had to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. I felt like I had to do what the rest of my family did. Um, my grandfather who passed away, um, about three months after I was born, unfortunately, um, was very high up in the corporate banking world. Um, and so for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to go to college and I'm just going to be a banker or I'm going to be a lawyer, or I'm going to do what the rest of my family did, you know? Yep. Um, and I went to college initially to get a degree in physical therapy and very, very quickly decided that that was not for me, um, <laughs> actually took a creative writing class, um, and did, actually turned in no new material. All the material I had, uh, submitted as homework assignments were poems or stories or things I had written in high school, nice. um, that were just kind of like journal entries almost. 
Um, and then the teacher actually at the end of the semester, when we were doing our, you know, reviews, if you will, said to me, you know, what's your degree, Michelle? What are, what are you planning on getting your degree? And then I said, well, right now I'm on track to, to be a physical therapist. And she goes, no, absolutely not. <laughs> um, and so she convinced me to, she convinced me to kind of lean into something that I, I knew I enjoyed, but I didn't know that I could make a career out of it. Um, yep. So I quickly um, embraced that. I actually changed my degree to journalism and psychology within the next couple of months. Nice. Um, it took me almost four months to tell my parents that because I was <laughs> petrified that they would be against that. Um, yeah. But once I finally did tell them um, when I had gotten home for spring break that year, my dad actually left a book he had written in college and a book of poetry that he oh, had wow. written like a journal for himself that he never actually published, obviously, um, on my bed at home. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, maybe it's just a recessive gene. And it's just stuck down <laughs> in there that I didn't even know. Um, so I changed my degree to journalism and psychology with the intention of, um, you know, I want to be able to write and talk about people, but I also want to understand why people are the way they are. So yep. after college, um, I did get into law school. I did turn it down, um, thankfully. Um, <laughs> but I ended up going into corporate America, like most people do. So I went and got a, a job at a small public relations firm uh, that specialized in social media stuff or the new trend of social media at the time, which was very Twitter heavy, mm -hmm. um, as well as LinkedIn. Um, back then, that, this was in 2012. So definitely a different time in, in yeah. our life, although that isn't really that long ago. <laughs> yeah. um, but so I, I started there and within the first six months I quit. Um, and the reason for me was every single client was paying an absurd amount of money, in my opinion, and all of their content looked exactly the same. Right. So I was very, very frustrated by it. And I can't tell you how many times I brought it up to the quote boss and it just never went anywhere. Um, and it was kind of one of those like, Michelle, you're the newbie, like stay in your place kind of thing. And I, it just wasn't my personality and I wasn't okay with that. So I ended up quitting. I incorporated myself as Burma Media PD in November of 2014. So about a year and a half later. Um, so in the interim, I was just kind of, I was kind of bartending and doing other things just to kind of get through until I figured out what I was actually going to do with myself. Um, so in November of 2014, I incorporated myself and then got into what a lot of people know as the influencer space. So yep. if you guys have ever heard of um, term, right. Most of the time you think of, Oh, someone's holding a picture uh, or holding a product and then posting it and saying, go buy it. Yeah. Right. That was definitely not the type of influencer that I was. Um, nobody wanted that. Um, <laughs> but what I actually did was I worked with really big brands and a lot of bigger industry brands, um, and professionals, if you will, not just product, but also brands as far as faces and people, yep. Um, and what we did was they would give me a, a budget for the month, let, let's just say $5,000. And they'd say, you know, with that $5,000, you got to pay yourself, you got to create ad copy, and then you got to put my ad on enough Instagram accounts to generate an ROI so that I can keep sending you money every month. Right. So in the process, I got very, very good at understanding what kind of content people actually care about, yep. um, what kind of content people buy from, right? So what makes people make purchasing decisions off of these pieces of content, um, and I also got really, really good at developing relationships through social media because all of those people that were doing it, um, or that were asking for help, like I never met them in person. Right. Yeah. So I had to create a relationship with them through this digital platform that was really new at the time. Instagram was definitely a, a much newer platform in 2014. So, um, I did that for about two years. Um, it was incredible. Um, I went from, you know, being a broke 22 year old in Southern California to like, Oh my gosh, I can afford to like buy things. It was great. <laughs> um, it was awesome. It was a very, very big life shift for me in a good way. Um, but about two years in, I started realizing that I'm really good at this, but I only can do so much for these people in front of me. Right. I can't help the masses because I got to focus on this one-to-one -one relationship between right. me and this individual client. Um, not to say that's not amazing, but I was just in a place that I was ready to help more than just the six people that I was helping at the time. Yeah. Um, and six people was a lot to manage with that stuff. Um, so I actually hired a business coach in the UK. I flew to um, the UK about a month later, um, met with him, sat in coffee shops for eight days straight, pretty much. Wow. Uh, think about like those big poster papers with the, you know, the markers that you can use to write on like the easel markers. Um, and all we did was mind map out where Burma Media was going to go over the next 10 years, basically, was kind of the plan. Um, and in that, I very quickly realized I had a huge opportunity to create an online course, um, which was something that most people weren't doing yet. It was very new. 
Um, it was something that a lot of people didn't even really know to do. Yeah. Um, it was one of those things. A lot of people weren't really having success as far as scaling it because they didn't know how. So there was all these things that were kind of scary about this process, but also super intriguing to me. So um, he said, fly home, fire all of your clients that are not in the real estate or mortgage space, which at the time um, I only had two. So I had to fire all my other clients except for those two. <laughs> Um, and I started work on creating the Instagram power method, um, and that officially launched in July of 2019. Um, and as far as why real estate one, I just love real estate. I personally have a huge, um, desire to be involved in the process and to learn about all of it. Um, I've bought and sold multiple houses myself. Uh, my husband and I are in the process of trying to decide where to buy an investment property. And it's just something that I've always just really enjoyed. Yep. Um, and then the lending space is something that, um, you know, kind of happened by default because they're directly related to yep. realtors. And my job was to get new relationships from agents. And so, because I got really good at doing that, I got really good at helping loan officers also do that because their yes. ideal client is also an agent. Yep. So kind of just happened organically. Awesome. So, and I think it's important to so know that that's my that yeah. And your, your story is good to know because it, it helps people realize that you're not just someone who just, I figured out Instagram. I tried it. You've, you've been through a number of things to, to build to where you are today. And you've got the experience from, from the corporate side of things. You've got the experience from the one-on-one -on -one side of things. You've got the experience from helping agents. And that really helps you develop the program you develop because a lot of people, like I said at the beginning, is that a lot of people just try to figure out Instagram and they don't really know what they're doing or they watch what other people are doing. So I want to dive into then kind of the Instagram power method, kind of the fundamentals of what you see, how agents can be using. So if you were thinking, saying, Hey, how should agents be using it? Let's start with that. And then we'll kind of roll from there. Yeah. So if I can, this happened this morning, actually, and it really irritated me. And I think it's perfect on point with this conversation is I had an agent who bought my course about six months ago, um, reach out to me saying that, my course felt like it was what all of the title companies, all the free classes she could have taken. Like she thinks she could have just done it that way instead of paying mm -hmm. the 1500 for my course. Um, and at first I was very taken back by that because I can tell you, I have an ungodly amount of testimonials from success stories of people in my program. And I started to ask myself, you know, where is she coming from with this? And why is she saying that? Well, I went to her social media and she hasn't posted on Facebook or Instagram <laughs> in 22 weeks. So I thought to myself, on what grounds do you have to, to speak that way? Right. Yeah. Um, and so it was very frustrating and very irritating. And um, the idea of, well, I should be able to generate business by just like putting this in my brain and not doing anything yeah. like it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, so the Instagram power method, the premise of the program is based in psychology um, so the idea is if I can help you guys understand exactly who your ideal client is, exactly where they hang out on social media, exactly what then makes them decide whether or not you're worth hiring, um, then I want to be able to help you get there. So there's so many homework assignments that the program alone has 22 handouts that are all meant to be printed and, and done as actual homework assignments. And yep. a lot of people might be like, whoa, that's a lot. Um, but for me, guys, it's, it's a matter of these are the steps that I took to be successful and to run what I now have, which is a nearly seven figure business at, you know, not even six years in, which is insane. Yep. Um, and all I did was reverse engineer it and give you guys the golden yellow brick road, if you will. Um, but for anybody listening, it's not about the one one right? It's not about how to post on Instagram. Yep. It's not about how to post a story. Um, are we going to teach you guys that? Or can we, of course we can. Yep. Um, but the program is so much bigger than that. Um, and it's really designed to help you speak to the person that you really want to attract, um, create and develop content to solve their issues and their pain points. Um, and then ultimately to help position you as a lot of what a lot of people like to say, the community mayor is like the big phrase that everybody likes to use yep. um, or the digital mayor. Um, but to me, it's more about how can you use your content, use your profile to create a virtual handshake between you and somebody else that's so solid that they don't need to go to the other 10 agents that they're following on Instagram. They just want to go directly to you. They're so, you know, they're bought into you um, and they're ready to roll. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of agents, when they think of Instagram and things like that, they try to reach too broad of an audience too. And that's part of why I like your approach is you're all about that hyper local. You're all about that serving the community you're in and being that expert in that community and not trying to be all things. I've talked to many agents who say, well, if I can just reach and grow a massive audience and become viral, then that, that's going to be uh, the more followers I have, the better it is. And it's you and I both know that, that the hyper local people, it's better to have a smaller audience. So how do you get agents to start creating local content or, or, and are you doing that? And what does it look like for agents who are trying to be that local community ambassador? Yeah. So I'm so happy that you, you brought this up, like vanity metrics, every single person listening to this, I hope you guys just hear me say <laughs> that it means absolutely nothing, yeah. absolutely nothing. How many followers you have, how many likes you got on a piece of content. Um, I can't tell you how many clients I personally have that have generated business off of posts that have gotten two likes, yeah. right? Like meaning somebody clicked their website link, somebody hit the contact button and, and sent them a text or called them. I had a client just the other day call me and say that a, somebody found her on Instagram because she posted about 1031 exchanges because she's a multifamily agent. Yeah. Um, and the guy called the brokerage and said, I only want to talk to Carla. How do I get Carla? Um, and in that process, it was like, Carla, let's reverse engineer that. What kind of post was it where, you know, blah, 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 all the details of what the caption was about, et cetera. How often did you promote it? Um, and she goes, all I did, Michelle, was post it. And it got literally three likes. Yeah. Um, and I thought to myself, man, nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody cared. Yeah. Uh, and this guy has now is now in the process of doing multiple deals with her because he owns properties in multiple states. So he's selling multiple in California, wow. coming to Arizona and buying multiple and then turning some of them into investment properties. And it's this whole big thing that all she had to do is post about a 1031 exchange and position it in a way that piqued that gentleman's interest yep. um, to the point where now we're, we're talking about a several hundred thousand dollar deal for her. Right. Um, so how, how do we teach the hyper local piece? Number one, it starts with the niche conversation, right? So the homework yep. assignment I usually give people is looking at your last 10 to 15 transactions and writing everything down about them um, and asking yourself, what were the good things? What were the bad things? What were the things that I totally, it, for lack of a better word, effed up right during that transaction? <laughs> yeah. um, what kind of things um, did the client come to me with? What were their needs list? What were the things that they said? Um, this is a non-negotiable, you know, what was their budget, all that. But the key when you're writing down everything about these last 10 to 15 is the, the piece that I'm about to tell you is um, where did the lead actually come from, right? Yeah. So their last 10 to 15 deals, where did that lead actually get generated from? And if you say referral, cool, but like, where was their referral from, yeah. right? Because a lot of people, I'm sure you experienced this, Ryan, right? They're like, I'm the referral guy. Okay, <laughs> yeah. well, you got the referral somehow, yeah. right? Um, people, people get referred to me all the time, but the first question I ask them is, how did you find me, right? Yeah. Oh, I was on, I heard you on this podcast or, oh, I saw um, so-and-so tag you in a post. Like somehow that yeah. relationship was built. So yeah. you need to dig into that, right? Was it because you go to the CrossFit gym? Is it because you're a PTA mom? Is it because your kid's dyslexic and you go to like a dyslexic awareness thing all the time, right? Yeah. Is it because you love golf? Like, is it because you're really into tarantulas? Like, I don't really care, um, <laughs> yeah. but understand where that came from. Um, and I had a client who did this homework assignment really, really well and realized that more than nine, I would say nine out of her 10 deals came from her pit bull rescue that she owned. Wow. So it had nothing to do with real estate. It yep. came out of the fact that she owned a pit bull rescue and had really, really strong personal relationships with all of these people that were coming through her rescue that yep. then when it was time to buy a house used her because of the personal relationship. Yep. Um, so that homework assignment, if you do it in, in its entirety, the solution to what kind of content should I be producing? Gone, solved. And that's a big thing that I want to talk about because a lot of agents, when they think about content and they think about social media, they want to just copy and paste someone else's thing. They want to just send me some templates and I can just plug in my stuff. And the reality is just like the stuff I teach, it's I, there's no just one, one and done thing. It's, it's personal to you. It's personal to your audience. It's pers personalized to who you're trying to reach, why you're trying to reach them. It does take work up front. However, you're going to see a much better result. You're going to see a much better connection. You're going, to, you're going to get better deals. You're going to have better relationships when you take the time to do that. And I'm sure, like you said, that lady who you mentioned isn't willing to do that, isn't willing to take that time. And if you don't do that, you can't get those results. And sure, you can copy and paste some template stuff, but you're not going to get the same results when you actually personalize it and then take that work and time to do that. Yeah. 
and then don't call the person who's trying to coach you and tell you that <laughs> it's not working. Yeah, right? Exactly. Uh, which I mean, we've all dealt with those people, right? How many, how many classes have you taught where you like you're there and there's agents who are like, I'm so gung ho about this, I'm gonna go do it, da, da, da. And then the next time you teach a class three months later, it's the same exact conversation, yeah. right? Because they're just not willing to do what they know they need to do. Um, and a lot of people are so stuck in the, well, I'm so busy right now. I just need to focus on being busy. Um, and what I tell everybody, and if COVID taught us anything, it's that when you're really busy, that's actually the time you really should double down mm -hmm. on a lot of this stuff because it's going to be what keeps you busy. Yeah. Um, and some, that's something that, you know, I don't really have, I don't really have a stomach for people who don't implement things because it, I just know that, you know, in order to be successful, you have to put it out there and do it. And then if you fail or if it's not working, you have to have the wherewithal to understand how to fix it. Yeah. Um, and I think both you and I teach that um, in our, in our programs. Yeah, exactly. So I want to ask you then about the mistakes side of things. Cause a lot of people can teach you what you should do. What kind of things are you seeing agents do that they shouldn't be doing? Cause that sometimes is just as important, if not more important than saying, do this, it's don't do this. So what things do you see as, as a common trend? The number one, which makes me the most irritated <laughs> um, is screenshots of flyers. Right. Yeah. How many of you guys have seen or like screenshots of graphics? Right. So they just find like these graphics of like the five steps to the home buying process um, and not to throw title under the bus. But that's what a lot of what they provide. Right. Is these really in-depth, detailed graphics. But guess what? Like those graphics are designed to be at an open house. Right. Or to be given in a buyer's packet, um, not to be taken in the digital copy being put on Instagram as a post. Um, and the reason for that is on Instagram, it's a visual sharing application. So it's designed to be read, um, with our eyes, not like that sounds weird, not, yeah. um, read like a book, but consumed with our eyes as like a, something that we want to scroll. Right. So if a, a flyer comes up, we can't just scroll, right. And actually consume what's on the flyer. We have to stop and we have to like zoom in, look at the text, yep. um, and really like hyper-focus on this one little thing. Um, whereas the, the way that I want them to do it. So if that's the wrong way to post that flyer, the right way to post that flyer is if it's got 10 bullet points on it, take the title of the document, make that the title of your template, and then put the first bullet point as what's on the template, um, and turn it into 10 separate posts, right? Yep. So instead of one flyer with so much text that you can't read anything anyway, yep. um, you make that one flyer with 10 bullet points equal 10 posts. So now all of a sudden you're not in this, well, I ran out of things to post or I ran out of things to talk about, um, which is another very, very common problem that people come to me with. Yeah, it's the same philosophy I have with billboards and park benches. I'm not anti billboards and park benches. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of them, but most of the mistake that some agents make is yeah. they try to put all kinds of information on there. And it's like, you literally, they're driving by, you have a second to grab their attention. It's the same with Instagram posts where it's like, you got to be purposeful clear what you want and not a lot of posts. So is there anything else you see agents making that I would say would turn away people or turn off people? Because that's, I think a lot of people get turned off by marketing. Yep. Yep. So another one that I see a lot is listing, 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 right? So you want to showcase all of the deals that you've done. And this is not new. I'm not the first person to say this. Um, but if you are doing that, all you're telling your audience is that you do a lot of deals, right? Yeah. And that you make a lot of money. Um, you're not actually telling them anything about why they should hire you other than yeah. to say, clearly you can get it done, right? Yeah. Um, but that's a huge problem. And one of the things I tell people when it comes to listings um, or, you know, closed transactions is nobody cares how many you've done per month. What people care about is have you been able to create and showcase a relationship that you had that somebody else can see themselves in so mm -hmm. that they then want to hire you, right? Yep. So when it comes to posting listings, instead of posting every transaction that you have, my suggestion is maybe one or two a month that you showcase new listing, you showcase it's now under contract, you showcase that it's now closed. And you, in the, in the meantime, you're talking about the neighborhood and other posts. You're talking about the coffee shop that's down the street from that. Yep. Uh, property that this particular buyers are, or these particular buyers are buying. Um, and then you tell the story at closing, instead of posting the picture with the buyers at closing with the title key, right? Um, post a picture of you with them out in front of their new home, or you handing them their keys and telling the story of that relationship. Yeah. Um, because the idea is that someone should scroll and read that 
um, and see this cute picture of a mom with her son and you know, that's it. And be like, Oh my God, this was a single mom that was able to buy a home so she could have a, a home for her family. Yeah. Um, and this agent, you know, Ryan was the one who was able to make it happen, but like how, right. And that's yeah. where that story comes in. Um, so weaving storytelling into your transactions versus just telling me that you've done a lot of transactions, yep. um, is so huge. Yeah. And that's one of the things I teach is positioning. I, in my CPR, one of the things I talk about and positioning is so important. You can do that by storytelling, by being that ambassador for the community, by being the expert. And it's not just about, I sell more homes or I'm the, the, the best agent. So for you, when you're doing this kind of stuff, I, I'm sure you get from a lot of agents where they say, oh, I don't have the time to do this. I don't have the energy. This. How much time should someone be committing to this? Because if you, you see all different levels of, of success with this, how much time should someone be setting aside to be using Instagram or any social media, really? Really? Um, it, it's so different for every person. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I can tell you that what I want people to do and what I coach people to do um, if you can set aside an hour to two hours to create content and execute content, meaning like schedule it out, put it out in advance, or at least plan it out in advance, yeah. um, per week, you're, you're doing great, right? If yeah. you can make one of those things that you create in those two hours, a real, even better, um, yeah. and then the rest of the week during, you know, every day, let's say that you do that on Monday. So the rest of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, your only job is to post story content, which I mean, takes four seconds, literally right before I jumped on here with you, Ryan, I recorded a story said, Hey, I'm getting ready to go live here with Ryan. Come check us out. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's as simple as it is. And it took me 20 seconds total yep. to record it and then actually post it. Yep. So, um, you know, again, it's relevant to the person, what their level is of understanding. But again, I think that also comes down to, do you have a system in place or a strategy, if you will, that makes it easier? Um, cause that's certainly going to help. Um, but if you just try to quote, you know, free ball it, if you will, it's going to take longer. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. So I want to ask you then, okay, people get the content. They say they nailed the content. I've seen a lot of agents struggle with getting people to follow it, getting people to engage and getting the right audience. So what, do you, how do you teach agents to actually get people who are the right people to connect with them? Because for a lot of people I've seen, I, I one of the agents that went through my coaching program, she did an amazing job with a Facebook group and then has not promoted it, but has amazing content there, but no one's seeing it. So how do you, how do you get people to, to see what you're doing? Yeah. So when it comes to engagement in particular, I always tell people, and again, this is going to be like the fast version yeah. of, of how to actually do this, but, um, the fast version of how to get people to start consuming your content is you have to be engaging on social media where they engaged, right? Meaning where are they sitting on the couch at 5 PM scrolling, um, aimlessly, right? So that's where this whole conversation of who's your ideal client, where do they hang out? What do they actually enjoy doing comes into play, right? So the example of Lindsay, um, the client I was telling you about who gets most of her leads from the, her pit bull rescue, right? Where are her ideal clients hanging out on social media? They're probably looking at dogs or dog pictures or dog reels, right? Or cute pictures of pit bulls with babies because they're about to have a baby and they want to know what kind of dog to get. Like, yeah. so if that's the case, how do you then transition into creating connection there? Um, you know, you can follow all the dog rescues. You can follow all of the um, local shelters, right? You can follow the pet smarts of the world that have local pages. Um, there's a lot of them, right? Uh, and start engaging there. You can then create an entire series for the month. Maybe it's four or five videos where you actually go to each one of the, you know, ASPCAs or the shelters, and you just record a quick video about how um, you went and you donated an hour of your time to, you know, support or volunteer, um, come check out the shelter and you tag the shelter and you post it. And then hopefully the shelter reshares you onto their social media. So now all of a sudden, not only is your audience seeing that you care so much about this particular thing, um, or things plural, um, yep. but the thing that you posted or tagged, I, ideally they would share you to their page. Um, and then you just got in front of a whole new set of eyeballs and that's yep. how we grow, um, with a very hyper local intention, not just location wise, but also with an idea of like, what are the types of people I actually want to do business with?
Yeah, that's exactly. I, I, I call it one to many. And if you can get in front of other people's audiences, that's one of the best ways to grow quickly. Instead of just trying to slug at one person at a time and try to get one follower at a time. If you can highlight people, interview people, showcase people, businesses and things in the community, they're going to share it. They're going to go out there and want to, to help showcase it. And that's going back to the psychology side of things. That's one of the things I talk about is when people are interviewed or featured on something, they're going to share it with their friends and family. If I just post a Facebook ad, I'm not going to go tell my parents or my family that, Hey, I ran a Facebook ad. I'm going to, sh- if I, but if I got featured in something, someone did an interview on with me or whatever, I'm going to share that. And when you interview other people, when you become that community connector, people are going to share it. And, and then now you open up to their audience. And like you said, if you can connect with the right people that are connected to the right type of audience that you want to connect with, it just makes it that much easier to do, which is, which is huge. So you mentioned video, and I think that's an important part because for a lot of people, they think of Instagram, they think just photos. Instagram's really moving into video as well. So how do you see agents doing well with Instagram videos and things like that? How does, how is that tying together now? Yep. So do as many stories as you can with your voice and your face. Right. And I know that a lot of people hate that. They don't like the sound of their own voice. They're like, I mean, I can't tell how many girls I've talked to are like, well, my hair wasn't done today. Who cares if your hair was not done today? Yeah. Um, nobody does, right? Um, but it's one of those things where showcasing your voice, your personality, even the you know the mannerisms that you have that way, um, it can be done in stories and can be done very, very easily and consistently. Yeah. Um, as far as video specifically for your feed is concerned, um, I always, like for me, I love to share podcast clips with little bits of knowledge for people. Um, yeah. You know, I get featured on podcasts all the time. So that's my way of showing my audience that, I have all of this value to add to them. Um, Now agents specifically, how can they do it? They can do um, videos of them walking through a neighborhood, talking about why this neighborhood is where they're going to take their buyers this afternoon um, and kind of creating that, like they're walking or pounding pavement, but turning it into content that can connect versus having to door knock a hundred doors. Right. Um, But also my idea for, for anybody is create an entire month around some topic that you really want to focus on. So for example, If you want to do, um, let's just use a a city here. So I live in Leesville, Louisiana, right? So let's say we're going to showcase all of the best restaurants in Leesville. Like, let's pretend I'm an agent trying to sell houses here, right? Um, How would I go about doing that? I would make an entire series for the month about like the five best restaurants here in Leesville, right? Um, And I would go and I would interview the owner. I would sit and maybe even have a cup of coffee in their coffee shop. And I would record video content about my experience with that cup of coffee. And then let's say um, somebody local walked in and then I'd just be like, Hey, oh my gosh, you must be a local. How often do you come here? Right. And it's all part of this really fun interactive video. Um, And guess what? How long did that take me? 20 minutes to like drive to the coffee shop, get a cup of coffee and sit there and and record like five minutes worth of video. Um, It's not hard. Um, And you can then do that for five different places. And then maybe the rest of your content, when you um, are posting lifestyle or like stoic images to your point, right? Not the video content. Um, You do things in the neighborhood as well. So it becomes like this entire month about, I'm trying to generate business in this one area. Um, But also I get to hear your voice. I get to see your face. I get to actually see you interacting with people. And then I also get to learn to love you through the other content. Um, And then talking about, you know, value theory stuff where you're adding value about like the pricing of the neighborhood, comparing it from this neighborhood to the next, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. There are so many different ways you can go into that. But the idea is create content that can transcend and last. Don't try to create as much content that's like right now today, um, because then you you'll be back in the same rut of like, I don't have any content to produce, you know? Exactly. And I think the other thing that a lot of people don't think about when they use social media is that they think once I post it, it's there and it's done. You can repurpose it. You can reuse it. I, I've told, told agents all the time. Once you create videos, once you create content, use that when someone reaches out, use that in your Q and A's, use that in your FAQs on your websites. When someone asks about a neighborhood and you did a video about that, you can quickly shoot them off a link to that post specifically. And I just did that today. Someone reached out to me and was asking about farming and turnover rates. And I had a blog that I had written and I just quickly copied that link and said, Hey, check out this. Cause it just helps add that that next level. And instead of just waiting for someone to find it, you can then take those snippets, reshare it, repurpose it and, and use them. And that's where you're going to start to get more engagement, which is, is huge. Yeah, I mean, I always tell people, especially agents, right? You guys have email lists. You guys have a list of people that you are trying to stay top of mind with. So yeah. if you're going to record that video and post it on Instagram, turn it into an email where you say like, 
you know, whatever neighborhood update or um, yep. what's like, get a little bit more creative. And I'm not as good on the fly for some of my titles, <laughs> but um, create a fun, catchy title about this neighborhood, right? About like the neighbor, the best neighborhood for the ice cream truck, right? Like, let's yep. just pretend. Um, and then it's the video about you walking through this neighborhood. Um, but the key, here's the key for that is make sure it's linked to Instagram, make sure it's linked mm -hmm. to Facebook, right? So yep. that um, when someone clicks on it from your email, it pushes them to um, your Instagram or it pushes them to your Facebook live video that you did or to the LinkedIn post that you put out um, wherever it is so that not only is your email list now tapping into other platforms that you're on, but vice versa, right? Yeah. You can use your social media to also push people to your email list and it creates what I call like the life cycle of social media yeah. um, in your business. And the idea is no matter where I find you, I should see the exact same version of you everywhere. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. So obviously social media changes, technology changes, Facebook, everything going on with Facebook right now and renaming things and, and changing things. And where do you see the future of Instagram going and where do you see the future of real estate using Instagram for their business? I honestly, I see, I would like to see and, and pray that realtors start to really put a lot of time and effort into creating the life cycle through Instagram, mm -hmm. meaning that Instagram becomes the home base, it becomes their website. Um, and everything that they do is designed to push people back to this platform. Um, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, in various forms like TikTok videos or what, um, I genuinely believe that Instagram is that place. Now, my ultimate goal is that people start to ditch grassroots marketing as a whole, right? I'm not saying grassroots marketing isn't worth your time. I'm just saying the ROI is so much smaller. So I'd like to see people or yeah, you have a bigger opportunity, right? You can get in front of way more eyeballs than you ever could. If you door knock, like think about, you know, how much can you get done in two hours? Would you rather cold call hundred names or would you rather um, post and create content for five or six yeah. days where each day you're reaching a hundred thousand people yeah. potentially. Um, so I'd like to see people shift to that. I'd also like to see people focus more on doing it themselves if that right. makes sense yep. versus 100%. being so quick to just pay somebody else to go do it because not that that's not, you know, something you can do, right. There's companies, you know, myself included that we have that opportunity for people. Um, but even the way that my company runs that type of content for others, we have a very unique way of doing it because we want it to sound like you. We yeah. really genuinely want your content to look, feel and sound like you, even if it's not you doing it. Yeah. Um, so getting in the habit of trying to shift your focus from I'm too busy to this is something, this is a non-negotiable. This has to be time blocked into my week, yeah. because if not, I'm going to lose deals to people who are doing it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And you're trying to create a brand that people are, you're reaching people in broader, in a broader sense. And that's why, again, I like farming so much is that you can layer them in and I call it strategy stacking. So you can have social media, you can use Instagram, you can do offline marketing, you can do online marketing, you can do all these different things. And then they're going to capture people and capture more people instead of just doing one channel or one strategy, you're tying it all together and, and getting more people in there. So yeah, I de definitely agree. So if you were to give one last piece of advice then for agents who are maybe struggling with, with Instagram or, or wanting to really take it to the next level, what advice would you give? Oh gosh, there's a hundred things I can <laughs> say, but I think the number one thing for anybody is or anybody who's listening is you can't not do it. Right. Yeah. So rip the bandaid off and start doing it. Even if it sucks in the beginning, right. Even if you're just like, I don't like the templates that I'm making. I feel like my content doesn't look good. I feel like no one's seeing it. Um, change your vocabulary and just ditch all of those you know, fears or internal things where you think to yourself, like nobody will care, right. Or nobody cares what I'm eating for dinner. Like you don't know that, yeah. right. I posted in stories the other day of homemade chicken piccata that I posted or that I made, excuse me, for my husband after a long day of work. And people are like, where's the recipe. <laughs> right. And what did it do? It just created a ton of conversations for me, yeah. right. In my DMs about chicken piccata yeah. that I thought nobody would care about. Yeah. Right. Um, so I want people to, my, my advice is ditch the excuses and do it anyway. Um, and what will happen is that as you start to do it and you start to see, I don't like the way that that looks, I don't like the way this looks, that's how you get better, right? That's yeah. how we get better as, um, you know, people that are trying to um, create careers out of this, right? Ryan, you're a great example. I'm a great example. Like we didn't get where we've gotten by not making mistakes in the past, right? Yep. Um, the exactly. key is 
we've done, we started, we got it out there in the first place. And then we learned from getting it out there to say, I could have done this better, or I could have done that better. Um, but so many people just don't start yeah. that. How can you get better if there's nothing for you to learn from? Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so if you don't like the way you look in a video, because if you feel like it shows your double chin, then maybe it's just a video angle and it's a super simple, you know, fix, yep. but like, how are you going to know that if you don't do the video yeah, in the first place? Exactly. So, um, that's my anthem for 2022 <laughs> for people. It's like, how many cares that you don't like the way your hair looks yeah. today? Yeah, it's, it's, it's great advice. Cause it's so true that so many agents stop because they want it to be perfect. And they look at the final product when they see a big person, an influencer or someone who's got a lot of followers and go, oh, I couldn't do that. It's like, well, they didn't start there. They started small and they scaled up and you can scale up and scale to whatever level you want to. So one of the things we always wrap up with is a best book segment. So what's one book that you'd recommend that's had an impact on your life or you think would have an impact on our viewer's life? Yeah. Uh, gosh, I have like five. I think you and I talked about this the <laughs> other day. Um, rocket fuel has been huge for me right now, um, with the, you know, the process of growing a bigger team, not real estate wise, but as far as my company is concerned, yep. um, that's, you know, especially for someone who's trying to scale, um, but for an agent and so, you know, even somebody who's maybe not an agent listening and just a business owner in general, um, high performance habits is probably my single most favorite or the best one. Um, good to great is a close second. Um, but for me, high performance habits was something that, you know, five years ago when I read it, I sat down and as I'm reading it, I started to see myself in these pages and I was like, oh my gosh, I do that. Oh my gosh, I do that. Yeah. Oh wait, I don't do that. Right. And you start to realize, um, where you're failing in your business, but also you get the feeling of I'm doing that. And it's really yeah. good. It's a really good feeling. Yeah. Um, and he gives you six six specific habits, but the, the one I want everyone to take away from that book, even if you don't read it was the idea for me that totally changed the trajectory of how I did my to-do list for the day. Um, but it was all about every morning when you wake up looking at your checklist and saying who needs me the most today. Mm. And that person gets you to start, right? Yeah. So that person is your priority that day. Everything else falls around that. Um, and if you focus on making lists that way and yeah. executing lists that way, um, gosh, you'll be so much more productive in a day than, than you've ever been. Um, and I can't tell you how good it feels. I love highlighters. So for me to be able to have a checklist and just highlight away and just like yeah. get down that feels so good. Um, but most of the time, the thing at the top of the list is the hardest, yeah. right? So if you can get through that hardest thing, um, man, it, it's an, it's an awesome day. If you can do it. Awesome. Uh, Brendan Richard's books are awesome. I, I love him and his what he teaches, I have his uh, academy for stuff. Like that. He's, he's great. So that's a great book. All those are great books. So we'll definitely put those in the show notes so people can check those out. So if people want to check out what you're up to, find out what you're doing and how they can connect with the Instagram Power Method, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so follow me on Instagram, Burma Media Social. I'm sure uh, Ryan can put that in the show notes for them, uh, yep. for anybody listening. Um, I do have a big event coming up December 2nd and December 3rd in Dallas, Fort Worth. So anybody who's in the Dallas area, um, or not, if you want to come travel and hang out with me, then I would love to have you. Um, but we're putting on an event called Limitless, which is essentially designed to help you pursue discomfort in the social media space as we move into 2022. Yes. Um, meaning those things that you feel like you suck at, let's tackle them. <laughs> um, so that is what that event is going to be about. Um, I'm super excited. I'm doing it with an amazing friend of mine, Kyle Draper. Um, so if any of you guys are familiar with him, um, him and I will be tag teaming that. But um, other than that, follow me on Instagram. Um, the Instagram Power Method course is a great opportunity for you guys to start doing this yourself, start learning how to do it. Um, but more importantly, um, reach out to me via DM, even just if you have any random question, I'm more than happy to help. Awesome. So we'll put all that in the show notes as well so people can check it out. So Michelle, thank you again for being on the show. I love your passion and I love your commitment to excellence in this and really finding your niche because I'm, I'm very passionate about niches and, and really helping agents increase their business and really bring their story to light, which is awesome from a, from an agent perspective and from a farmer perspective, it's awesome to see other people who love and, and, and share that as well. So thank you for being on the show. I know our audience is really going to appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. And thank you, Ryan, for inviting me to join you. Awesome. I thank loved you. it. Bye. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming.